Welcome. <laughs> All right. All right. How's it going, Ray? It's good. How are you, Joseph? I'm chilling. And are you shooting blanks? Shooting blanks. No children yet. That's a good thing. <laughs> I think. I think, right? I think. No, unless I think children trying. are a good thing. I think children are a good thing, but are yeah. you, unless you're not trying. Yeah, that's true. But you know who is trying to shoot blanks? John Cutesack. John Cutesack. <laughs> John Nicesack. <laughs> John Cleansack. John Cleansack. We're talking gross point blank. Gross point blank. <laughs> it's Michigan March still. Michigan March. We, this is probably the most iconic Michigan movie ever made. You think so? No. Okay. I was going to yeah. say, you can't be serious, yeah, right? No. Okay. <laughs> um, it's in a city that no one's ever heard of before. That's true. But Unless you a, live in Michigan. It's a good movie, though. It is a very good movie. I had a lot of fun watching it. I liked it a lot. Um, it's, uh, what, like 99, was it? Yeah. Know, something know, it was like, like late 90s. Yeah, it was, it was mm-hmm. 90s fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, had you heard of this movie? I had. Yeah. Yeah. I've been he- hearing about this You've movie. You've been for, heard of this I've movie? I've been heard of this movie for I've been a while heard of now. This movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, when I heard about a movie based in Gross Point with John Cutesack in it, I yeah. was like, oh, I'll give it a try. And right. it, it rocked. I liked it. It rocked. Um, yeah. It was a cool movie. Uh, the, the writer of it, he, he grew up in Sterling Heights. Ah, yes. And he, um, I, I think he wanted to base it on Sterling Heights, but he was like, ah, like, I want gross points probably. But also point blank. Yeah, I think that's another reason why I was. Point, yeah, yeah. Like heights blank doesn't really work. Sterling yeah. Heights blank. Sterling Heights blank. I'm not sure. Sterling I'm Heights gonna, shooters. I I'm think not maybe. sure I wa- would have watched a movie called Sterling yeah. Heights blank. Yeah. They should have called it, um, uh, fuck, what's that? What's the. Lake Orion shooters. What? Or no, what? Not Lake Orion. What's the city where that kid? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I know what it is, what's but it? I'm not gonna say it. What's this? What's the school called? I'm not saying it. It's not Oakland. It's it uh, does it. Yeah, you're on the right track, but I. <laughs> yeah. We sh- it's uh yeah, that's not like Columbine. That wasn't twenty something yeah. years ago. That was what two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah that's if they made this movie now it, yeah i guess so i mean this movie does have a, a bit of school shooting in it it does yeah they're shooting guns in a school yeah yeah um, i could say that the soundtrack rocks that was one of my soundtrack, favorite parts. good soundtrack i like the the german pop song very famous german pop oh song. what is it 99 red balloon yeah yeah that but came on 99 loft balloons yeah that came on during the end yeah 99 was loft balloons yeah <laughs> some krieger schmergen flirt <laughs> that's yeah i think that's the lyrics that's the lyrics yep i watch you know how gq does that thing where they'll have like actors talk about their career yeah I watched the one with John Cusack and he was talking about this movie and he was saying that he wrote the movie and I was like, John Cusack did not write this movie. I don't think John Cusack wrote this movie. He said in the interview, like, oh, this is the first movie that I wrote and produced and I had such a great time writing it. And, you know, I'm sure he like had input. But I was like, John Cusack is just taking all the credit for this movie. John Cusack is a bold faced liar. What do you think of John Cusack? I like him. I think he's a pretty good actor. Like, I couldn't off the top of my head name other things he's in, but I know for a fact I've seen him in a lot of other stuff. Being John Malkovich? Yeah. yeah. Being John Cutesack? Being John Cusack, yeah. And it's imagine having a cute nutsack. Yeah. It's, he finds a little hole in an office that he climbs into, and then he is himself. It's like, it's like, a, uh, it's like Human <laughs> Centipede, but like gay... And also, like, with yourself. And he's in his balls. Yeah, he's, he's in, in his, his own, own balls. Q-sack. Yeah, he's in his Q-sack. Um, um, but what about Joan? Joan? Yeah, also in the movie. Yeah. I I think it would have been funny if they made them the, the couple in the movie. That would be funny. But I think that if he was the producer and the writer of this movie, I don't so think he was going to... If he to be the yeah. writer of this movie, then yeah, he wouldn't. There should have just been a full-on, like, anal... Full pen between him full and pen, Joan. Full pen, anal between John and Joan Cusack. That's how you prove that, like, he's not the writer of this. 
the yeah. of the movie because right. there's not a full full if pen. He, if he wrote angle. the movie, he wouldn't have wrote in a, a scene where his sister gets stuck in the filing cabinet. Right, <laughs> and he anally raped her. <laughs> it wouldn't be. That's uh, what this movie was missing. Gross penis blank. An incest, um, anal. Yeah. Stuck in a file cabinet. So. Cute sack, gross penis blank. Yeah. That's, that's the, the porn parody. Of that's this movie. the porn parody. Yeah. John Cute Sack and gross penis blank. And he has a really cute sack and a really gross penis. Yeah. Gross penis blank. And, uh, <laughs> and instead of uh, being an assassin, he's a serial rapist. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not but, good. But like, but like for the government. For the government, like he is in the movie. They, yeah, the government sends him to, like, to to rape, rape like people. Al Qaeda. Yeah. He has AIDS, and so yeah. they're like, he's an AIDS assassin. That's, he's an AIDS assassin. AIDS assassin. They send him to Afghanistan to, to give rape Bin Laden. Bin Laden AIDS. So, so that way the U.S. doesn't have to come out straight up and say they killed bin laden they can yeah. just say bin laden died of aids yeah he died of natural causes aka gay gay rape aids. gay rape aids <laughs> that's a porn parody of this movie is john cute sack giving bin laden gay rape aids yeah <laughs> and it's called gross penis blank gross penis blank. that's why he has gross penis because yeah, he has aids he has gay aids yeah <laughs> Specifically gay AIDS. Specifically the gay ones. The kind yeah. you get from being gay. The needle ones. Different, you know, yes. Yeah. Different from the kind you get from being a cool heroin addict. Right. But this you get is, from being a cool gay guy. Yeah. Joan Cusack calls him and she's like, John, the government wants you to go <laughs> kill Bin Laden with your AIDS. With your gross AIDS penis. And he's like laying in a hospital bed and he's like, I guess I have to go use my AIDS penis he's to kill walking bin Laden. into a cave in afghanistan he's putting a, a silencer and a scope on his penis yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a full frontal nudity shot he's mounting a scope on his dick and he like he shoots cum and like a gun and it like he kills all the he has to like the, cock his cute sack back to reload yeah yeah i think this has legs this has <laughs> this has this, this has a third like leg a, yeah <laughs> There you go. It sounds like an episode of South Park. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of those actors who like fell off. Like he does like the Tubi and like the voodoo movies oh, now. Oh, really? Like the letter box, not letter box, red, red box or. Oh, yeah. What do they call it? Is that what, what it is? I don't know. Uh, they're like the machine you'll see at like a Kroger. Oh, yeah, red box. Red box. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. He I does a lot it. of those movies. I thought he was still around. He's still around, but he's not doing anything. What's cool. like, like, what's the last thing you've seen John Cusack in? He might be a Republican. Uh, uh, gross penis blank. Gross penis blank. Parody yeah. of gross point blank, which came. We out could probably ago. get him for that. We could get John Cusack for, for five thousand dollars. We could get him to do gross penis blank. Sub to the Patreon. Once we hit five thousand patrons, we're gonna script we're gonna gross penis blank. Gross penis blank. To and try and get John Cusack. Star John it. Cusack. Um. <laughs> Okay, so the movie. Yeah, I. Um, he's a contract killer. He went to Gross Point High School. Which he's not like action star guy. No. I don't even know if I'd consider him like comedy guy. Like he's not. He's. But he's both of those things in this movie. He's kind of funny. He's funny. But like he's not the comedy actor. Like no. if you asked me to name a comedy actor from the 90s, I wouldn't think of John Cutesack. Would you think of Dan Aykroyd? Not really. Yeah, I guess he was more 80s. Yeah. Yeah. I also don't like Dan Aykroyd. You don't like much, Dan Aykroyd? No. What do you I do saw you? there was a really, really shitty movie I saw that he wrote, produced, oh, and, and yeah, directed. Yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking and about. And started. It's called. It's fucking awful. It's like the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. And it was like, honestly, one of the most unbearable hour and 30 minutes of my yeah. entire life. And Is it called like Creepers or something like that? I have no idea. Yeah. It's really bad. He's like a judge. Yeah. He's like a fat judge. And it's the worst movie I think I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of bad movies. Like Black Adam. Did you see that? I saw Black Adam. I thought that was god awful. Yeah. So, yeah. As soon as I found out Dan Aykroyd wrote, produced, and directed. He wrote, produced, and directed Black Adam, too. Oh, yeah. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> as soon he as stars. I found out, as soon like... as I found out Dan Aykroyd made two of my least favorite movies of all yeah. time, I have something against him. Yeah. Are you looking forward to Ghostbusters, Frozen, New York, or whatever the movie's called? I'll go see it. 
Yeah. Just because it's a, it's not Lady Ghostbusters. Yeah, fucking. Melissa With Melissa Mc- McCarthy. <laughs> Melissa McCunty. <laughs> Melissa McCunty. <laughs> Who's the other one? Leslie yeah, who Cunt. else was in that? Uh, Melissa McCarthy. Kristen. Le- not Kristen Bell. No. Kristen the, Wig. N- was it Kristen Wiig? I think it was Kristen Wiig. And then wasn't there the, the other... lesbian from SNL? The black lady. Yeah. Well, yeah. Leslie Jones. Leslie Jones. But then the lesbian chick, Kate McKinnon. Cunt McKinnon. Cunt McKinnon. Cunt McKinnon was in it? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't... I'm not a big Cunt McKinnon fan. Yeah. Are you a Cunt McKinnon I'm fan? not. No. I don't know how she keeps getting roles. Cunt McCummin. Cunt McCummin. <laughs> Who's the like the new Kristen Wig? I can see her face, but I don't know her. On name. SNL, or yeah, she's on SNL. I don't know if she's she might still be on SNL. She's just like the goofy lady that you kind of want to fuck, like you did with Kristen Wig. Did you want to fuck Kristen Wig? I still want to fuck Kristen Wig. Bridesmaids Kristen Wig is okay. Prime. I could go primal for bridesmaids Kristen Wig. Primal Kristen. Primal. Uh, who who are you thinking of? I don't know. Does she, she like, have glasses or something? She's like kind of annoying and goofy like Kristen Wiig, and she's on SNL now. I could Google it. There's, um, I don't want to pull my phone out. <clears throat> what's her name? Uh, uh, the Scientologist chick. I don't remember her name. It's not Chloe Cunt- Feynman. Uh, it might be, but it's not Cunt McKinnon. No. It's not. No. Um, you know who would have been really good in Gross Point Blank? Who? Is Keenan. Keenan Thompson? SNL. Yeah, they should have had Keenan be in Gross Point Blank. I, I will say there is a lack of uh, diversity in the film. So yeah. They might be onto something. They should have had Keenan be Mr. Blank. Because that was his name. His name was Mr. Blank. Yeah, his name was Martin Blank. Martin Blank. Yeah. Martin Q. Blank, I think. So yeah, he's a pro assassin. Yeah. And he also sucks dick on the street on the side because he doesn't For make AIDS. enough money yeah. killing people. So no, he, he makes a, a lot of prostitute. money killing people. He wears like no, fancy yeah. suits in and the movie. Fancy yes, bar. he does. He does make a lot of money, and his sister is his like consultant slash yeah receptionist who gets him jobs. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Is she his sister in the movie, or is she just a random chick? No, she's like his friend. Okay, but his sister plays that yeah. role, and then his therapist is Alan Arkin. His therapist is Alan Arkin. Rest in peace. MP. Happy birthday in heaven. Alan Arkin fucking rocks. Yeah, R.I.P. in heaven. Maybe if he's, if, I think he's Jewish. Well, Jewish heaven. Yeah, that's fair. There's they don't. Be- heaven. They don't believe in heaven, but as a Catholic, I think they do. So, yeah. you know, Jewish heaven. Um, Alan Arkin is in Jewish heaven. Yeah, and he he told him on his first day he was gonna kill him if he told anybody about yeah. it, and so now he like tried to fire him as a as a uh, patient. patient every time he goes there, but he keeps going back and and threatening to kill him. Yeah, which I think is a great. I think there's Black legs Black. to that like concept in itself. Yeah, you could make that like a mini series. Yeah, is like therapist who is threatening to be killed and wants to fire a patient. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that's just The Sopranos. See, I haven't seen that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You know. But yeah, Doctor Melfi played by I know about Doctor Melfi. Doctor Mouthy. Doctor Mouthy. Yeah. Did she suck him off? Do they have an affair? No. Oh. But I know she Dr. gets Mouthy. like violently. John Cusacked. Yeah. John Cusack. She gets gross penis blanked. I know that. John Cusack mouths her. John Cusack, <laughs> Dr. Mouthies her. <laughs> Such a dumb joke. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, and he, his arch nemesis is Dan Aykroyd, but who's also, also your like arch nemesis. Boys. Yeah, they're like buddies, but also... He becomes his arch nemesis when he turns down the offer to join like the... Yeah, so Dan Aykroyd is trying to unionize all the assassins, and um, which is an insane concept. Yeah, it was just funny. Like that's a he's that's like a good bit. Yeah, he keeps telling him like, "Come on, man! Like all the other assassins are in on it. Like you know, we got to get paid properly." Um, yeah, the the opening scene, he's like trying to prevent the hit of a guy, and then he successfully does. But then Dan Aykroyd is the doorman. Yeah. And he, guns, he pulls out two Uzis and he just yeah. guns everybody down. That is a very good scene. And he just walks away. <laughs> it, they make it very like nonchalant with how easily they get away with their murders in this movie. Like he yeah. kills at the end, he kills the guy in the school. Yeah. And he just wraps him up in like a senior's banner and throws yeah. him in a closet and like nothing's in like a happen. furnace. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They put him in like the furnace. Yeah. Yeah. Um. 
so yeah, he has to go back to his 10-year anniversary? 10-year, yeah. But he doesn't want to. No. Alan Arkin tells him it's it'll be a good idea, and his sister slash receptionist tells him it'll be a good idea. And but, then he doesn't want to go. Yeah, but he goes to do a hit. And so he's like, all right, well, I might as well go. Yeah, he goes because there's a job in Michigan, and he wants to see... Mini driver. Mini driver. I've been wanting to get that. She's a fucking babe in this movie. Yeah. Smoke. I don't really think so, but yeah. I guess she's not your type. No. My that is right up my alley though. Yeah. This pale face, curly. Pale face. Dark hair. Jewy. Is she Jewy? I don't. I don't think so. No. And I don't think Winona Ryder is either. That's fair. Did you see the new Beetlejuice movie with Winona Ryder? No, I didn't. Did it come out? No, it didn't come out. But there, I think there was like a trailer for. Aren't it. they waiting for like Halloween? We should wait for Halloween. I the fucking Ghostbusters is coming out this week. That's not. Yeah. yeah. Is that a Halloween movie? It doesn't take place on Halloween, but. Beetlejuice is like inherently spooky, though. Yeah, Ghostbusters is spooky. Ghostbusters you think was like ghosts the first come blockbuster. And scary. Yeah. That's what Slimer was. Ghost was busting. Ghost come. Ghost, ghost busting. Yeah. Um Ghostbusters was like one of the first like blockbusters, summer blockbusters. And it was one of the first Ghostbusters. It was one of the first busters. Buster Busters? One yeah. of the first block ghosters. Yeah. <laughs> Star Ghostbusters starring Ron Jeremy. That'd be sick. Sorry, no, he Ron actually Jer he he was in Ghostbusters. Really? That's like one of those like fun like Hollywood facts. Is that like Ron Jeremy like as the a porno guy? guy. Yeah. has a cameo in, in Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters? Yeah. Is he an extra or something? He's an extra. Yeah, but he is like he's like the center extra. That's crazy. Yeah. Was he like popping off as the porn actor at the time? I think so. Okay. That's cool. That's good to know. I don't know if it was like intentional, like we're going to have Ron Jeremy like as an extra or if like just they were idiots and they just somehow let it slip through the cracks that Ron Jeremy. Was yeah, maybe he like was wanting to be in. He was like, hey, yeah. I want to be in Ghostbusters. My cock is so big. It should be in this movie. I want to be in the is Ghostbusters that even how he movie. Talks? I don't you think I've ever he heard talk? him speak. I've never heard him speak. He just looks like he sounds like that. Yeah. Have you, he looks like remember, a Mario. Do you remember the other famous huge dick guy, OG Mudbone? No. You is he the heard? guy in the picture? What picture? The, is where it's like a big black guy sitting on a bed? No, oh. I don't think that's OG Mudbone. Okay. OG Mudbone was another porn actor who was notorious for having a very, very large penis and like very, very extreme busts. Okay. And he died in his 50s. Uh, makes sense. Yeah. And I just, if, if you're he watching this all the life out of and you know who OG Mudbone is, comment down below because yeah. I feel like I might be getting, uh, what, do you, what do they call it? Mandela. Mandela affected right now. And there's no such thing as OG Mudbone and maybe it was just a social experiment. Yeah, that could be what it is. Yeah, also just just leave comments because we don't get enough comments. Yeah, also so comment this, down below if you've comment. seen Gross Point Blank. Yeah. Yes or no. Tell us what you think of Gross Point Blank. If you Point haven't Blank. seen Gross Point Blank, tell us what you think of John Have Cusack. Have you seen Gross Penis Blank? Tell us what you think John Cusack should do with his nuts. Should he, should he shave them to make his sack cuter? I think that'd be cool. Um, yeah. So Okay, so he goes back to Michigan to any... Uh, which, another thing I read online... None of this movie was filmed in Michigan, it which wasn't. is a little upsetting. Only the yeah. aerial shots were from Gross Point because Gross Point didn't want them shooting here. Yeah. Which is a very Gross Point thing. It is extremely Gross Point. Yeah. But all the fashion, too, was very uh, like Gross Point Shores. They're like yeah. rich, rich people of Gross Point. Yeah. Which I think it was implied they were supposed to be from the Shores. Probably. I don't really know too much about the Gross Points. I've like. I just think Shores is the rich one. Okay. Yeah. If you're from Gross Point, sound off in the comments yeah. below. Uh, arch nemesis of the show, Liam. No, he's not arch. <laughs> but he, he grew up in Gross Point. I wish we had him for this app. Um, yeah, I wish we had a, a true gp -er. Yeah. The only thing I know about Gross Point is that, like, you can only go to, like, the park if you live in that neighborhood. I remember him telling me something about, like, each neighborhood has their own park, but you can only go there if you live in that neighborhood. That sounds super gross point. Yeah. Wow. That's wow. And like they check your ID and everything and like, yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is in this park? Yeah. I want to check out the park. 
Are they like shooting pornos in there? That's probably what it is. With John Cusack? Yeah. John Cusack is shooting pornos there. Yeah. They're like, you can't come in. You can't come in. He's, you can't he's see this. a very busy guy. Yeah. Um, he's having sex with Joan Cusack <laughs> and Osama bin Laden. You don't get to see that. In a filing cabinet. In a filing cabinet, giving them AIDS. Specifically gay, <laughs> gay AIDS. AIDS. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool gay AIDS. Yeah, his yeah. mom like lost her mind and she's in a mental hospital now, which is a weird addition to the movie. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's not really explained. No, it's not. But I love the scene where he goes home and he goes back to like his house. Yeah. Where what's supposed to be his house. And it's like, a, a, I'm going to say Megalomart because that's from King of the Hill, but it's like a something. Like Mart. a 7 Eleven. Yeah, it's like a 7 Eleven. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he just. Which there's no 7 Elevens in Gross Point. No, are you kidding yeah. me? They're in a. There's not even gas stations in Gross Point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he like starts freaking out and he calls this therapist and he's bugging on the phone. And yeah. then the the guy who I think is a somewhat famous actor who plays the other, like the silent assassin who's trying to kill him. Yeah. I don't remember who that guy he's is. He's like in stuff though. Yeah. Um, and so he, yeah, is shooting at him with the Uzis and then he puts the C4 explosive in yeah. the microwave. Well, that, that's a bit later um, when he goes back there. But yeah, the the attendant of the Seven Eleven is just playing a video game. Yeah, he's like playing Tekken or something on a yeah. Arcade and he has cabinet. no idea that there's two guys shooting, shooting a billion yeah. like rounds at each other. The guy with the Uzi dumps like three clips, and he's holding two. Yeah, so he shoots like probably a total of three hundred rounds. They completely destroy this shop. The entirety and, of it. And then it and then he blows it up, <laughs> which is <laughs> just. I, it was a cool scene, but it was completely ridiculous that like also these everyone in this movie has horrible aim. Oh yeah, except no for one, John Cutesack. I don't even think so. I think he only like shoots one person in the whole movie. Oh well, the cops. I guess we can get to that later. Yeah. The end fight scene. Yeah. That's a great scene. That is a really good scene. Um. Yeah. There's two cops who are not cops, but they're like TS NSA or something. yeah. Uh, it's, uh, what's his name? Hank Azaria. Yeah, Apu and a black man. Yeah. Oh, he's the diversity. Um, in the oh, yeah, he's the diversity. I forget yeah, who so that, that actor is, Keenan. but he's a popular actor. That should have been Keenan. Yeah, I mean, he would have been like 16 when this movie came out. Still. Yeah. Well, what, when did Good Burger come out? I, mean, the, I think around the same. No, I think Good Burger was like early 2000s. Okay. Because Keenan was a young adult in Good Burger. Yeah. He would have been in... Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, foot long, not foot long. The Ben Stiller fat children movie, fat fat camp movie. Yeah, what's it called? Oh man, it's I love it. I can't think of the name. I've only seen it once in my life. I was watching Half it Pound work. or something like that. Oh man, you're killing me. It's a Disney movie. Yeah. Fuck. Keenan was in that, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah. But I'm saying he would have been in that at this time. I right. Think. Oh, fuck. Now I really want to know what that movie is called. It's going to sit on the tip of my tongue. Because I've Have you ever seen it? Uh, yeah, I think so. When you were like a kid? Yeah. Ben Stiller, Fat Camp movie. I want to say it's like something... Heavy Heavyweights. Weights. Yeah. There you go. Heavyweights. Yeah. That's a really good movie. Shout out Ben Stiller. Ben I think Stiller, I like him a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot of people hate on him. I like him. What do people hate on him for? Um, the being a Hollywood the lib. Museum movies. Oh, really? Being a, being a Hollywood lib. Um, some people think he just isn't funny. No, I think he's really funny. I think he's very I think funny. people don't like him because of nepotism, too. I yeah, see a lot of like true. nepotism comments, which who cares? Um, like, I feel like a lot of people don't like Ben Stiller for the same reasons they don't like Adam Sandler, which is that they like him a lot, both of them a lot when they're kids, and then they grow up and they feel like they can't like them anymore. Yeah, but Ben Stiller does like serious stuff now. So I, yeah, so does Adam Sandler. Yeah, it's true. Adam Sandler was in uncut, uncut penis. Uncut penis. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they call my brother and I is the uncut jokes. Yeah, which is ironic because he's Jewish and he's uncut penis. I, that's the whole yeah, plot yeah, of the movie. If is he that, did have an uncut penis, that'd be crazy because he is a Jewish man. That's the whole plot of the movie. Was they're like, Howard, you're the only one who's not circumcised. And we got to get this figured out, Howard. And he's just like, he's like, oh, no. 
I gotta get circumcised. And by the end of the movie, um, what's his name? The basketball player, uh, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett like has the scissors to his penis, and and they're like, he's like, no, don't cut my fucking you, don't fucking cut my penis. And then and yeah, the instead of the last shot being him with a hole in his head on the floor, <laughs> it's, it's just him. It's like his penis is cut in half, and he's just dead on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> And Julia Fox is his gay lover and is a man yeah. instead. Yeah. For whatever reason. He's a gay said. man with AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> Julius Fox. Julius Fox. Julius AIDS. Isn't uh, <laughs> Lucius Fox? That's what. That's Batman's guy. Yeah. That's Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Batman, I have AIDS. <laughs> you do a pretty good Morgan Freeman. I know, yeah, it's one of the few I can do. You do. Wait, give me some more. Batman, don't. Yeah, I lost it. Dude. Get busy swimming or get busy getting AIDS. You do a fucking really good Morgan Freeman. I could Freeman. play Morgan Freeman in a... Wow. Yeah. You could do a voiceover and convince me. You, like, if you had unlimited takes and could find, like, the right take for... You could do a voiceover and I you could have me convince you were Morgan Freeman. Yeah. We got to find a way to get, like, Morgan Freeman's voice into a sketch. So that way I can do, like... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I don't have many good voices. I have a really good Australian accent, but that's about it. Well, you can't put me on the spot like that. Just say like Hugh Jackman or something. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackoff. You know, down here in Sydney, we worship Hugh Jackman. Here in Sydney, we jerk off to Hugh Jackman. We jerk off to Hugh Jackman. Yeah. (laughs) That's pretty good. Everybody in Sydney jerks off to Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Which you would. You know, he's a Sydney. fucking hot guy, man. He's a, yeah. Do you feel bad for him because he's getting divorced? No, I yeah. didn't know he was. Yeah. I don't feel bad for any celebrity that gets divorced on us. Is he like married to a famous woman? Uh, I think she was also an actress, but she's not like his level. Well, and she's also like older than him. If you're a famous person, you get another married to another famous person. I don't feel bad for you and you get divorced. Yeah. But they were married for like 20 years. People online are devastated. Tom Brady and Giselle Bundon were married for like 20 years. Sucks for them. You know, I don't feel bad for famous people. Like Sucks for them. They can't make out with their kids anymore. Yeah, you still can. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you he's still doing that. I bet you he still will. <laughs> yeah. I would bet money on it. Yeah. And in fact, now that he's not playing football anymore, he has even more time on his he hands. He has more to time to make out with his kids. <laughs> They're just sitting around all day making out. He pulled his sons out of school so they could just make out all day. <laughs> they, yeah. Their mom is calling them. She's like, where are you? They're like, we're making out with dad. Leave what us is alone. She, I think she's Brazilian. Brazilian. Yeah. I can't do a Brazilian accent. T- I, yeah, Thomas. I, yeah. I'm just doing a British Thomas. accent. Thomas, you better not be making out with the boys. Don't make out with them. <laughs> Harry Potter. He's but only 12, Thomas. <laughs> do not make out with the boys. Don't boy. make out with his asshole. <laughs> Thomas, get off the couch. Stop making out with your son. Yeah. Um, so this gross point movie, uh, <laughs> what happens? They blow up the thing. Okay, so Minnie Driver is like a famous radio host in, in Gross Southeast Point. Michigan. Yeah, yeah. She hosts a, a, Gross a very Point dated based reference radio. that like everybody in the city listens to, like to this one, one chick's radio, radio station. station. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he shows up, and then that she like turns it into like a whole segment of her show. Yeah, um, and there's like a lot of sexual tension in the room, and all the listeners are getting involved, mm-hmm. um, including Hank Azaria. He's jerking off to this radio broadcast. And but he gets there on a Friday and the reunion's on a Saturday, I think. Is See, that what it is? Yeah. I feel like it's a couple days. So he, or he gets there on a Thursday and the reunion's on a Saturday? Yeah, maybe. So it's like takes place over like two days. Yeah. Yeah. And the first day he goes and sees her, she's like, oh, I don't know. And that's when she like pitches it to her radio audience. Yeah. And then he comes back the next day, I think, to see her again. And that's when he asks her if she'll go to the reunion with yeah. him. Yeah. And Jeremy Piven is like the hot shot uh, home, what, what do they call it, realtor. Yeah. And he sells all the fancy homes in Gross Point. Yeah. And he has hair. Yo, yeah, you're right. Jeremy yeah. Piven has a close, eh, not a full head, but yeah, close get, to a full yeah. head of hair in this movie, which is wild. Yeah. I think he has plugs now, or he got plugs. Um, oh, okay. Maybe Jeremy around. plugs in. Jeremy plugs in. Plugs in his ass. Um do you like you like Entourage, right? I haven't seen all of it. I've only okay. seen like I've never watched it through. 
like when I was a kid, it would come on and shit. And yeah. then like I have seen episodes when Gunner was watching it, I would pop in and it's hilarious. I like yeah. it a lot, but I have not watched it like through. No. Yeah. But I do like it. Yeah. He's a guy who got hit with the with the Me Too's and then now he does stand up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We could no probably shit. get him on this show. You think we could get Jeremy Piven on the show? I think we show? could probably get, the, get him on the show. That would be a good look for us though, is having Jeremy Piven on the show. Potentially. Uh, I, don't I feel like it's so. been long enough. People forgot about his Me Too stuff. You see, I didn't even know he was Me Too. So, yeah. how bad was it though? Like, what did he do? Exactly? I don't think he raped anyone. I think it was just like he was inappropriate on set. Was it an underage? I don't think so. Then he's fine. Yeah. We can have Jeremy Piven. Which, by the way, if you watched Entourage and you were surprised by the fact <laughs> that Jeremy Piven was like could be inappropriate misbehaving, on set, it's like. Look at the guy. That's very true. Yeah. 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 You're um, not wrong about that. Yeah. That'd be funny if in this movie he just kept, like, he, it's very obvious that Minnie Driver was with John Cusack, but uh, he just kept trying to, like, get with Minnie Driver. And yeah, Jeremy Piven yeah, was just Jeremy trying to fuck Piven her the whole time. Yeah, Jeremy Piven was a total dog. Yeah. yeah. Does he have a wife? I think... He, I think he mentions having a wife, but I, think I don't so. think we see her in yeah. the movie. Because I think the whole point is like everyone's married, everyone has kids, everyone's settled down. Yeah. Somehow, except for Minnie Driver and John Cusack. Well, Minnie Driver was because... married before. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I think that, yeah. Oh, she had a Jeff previous Goldblum. husband. And Jeff Goldblum. Oh, Minnie Driver, Minnie Driver. was sucking my dick. And take your pants off. When you left John Cusack, she came over here and said, hey, Jeff. <laughs> I watched Jurassic Park and find you quite attractive. I'd like to rent an apartment. <laughs> yeah. There's the punchline. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so on prom night 10 years ago, John Cusack disappeared. Um, and he's also straight up telling everyone, like, he kills people for a living, but yeah. nobody takes him seriously. Yeah, which I think is also a good bit. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I left to join the military, and then I left so I can be an assassin, yeah, and I kill like people a for a living. Killer, yeah. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah that's you're fucking hilarious, sick, dude. dude. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, fucking idiots. I wouldn't believe him. If, yeah, I'm going to my five year this year. You are. That's coming up for me. And are you going to tell him? Months. Watch the pod. I am. Yeah. I'm going to tell every. I'm going to get up drunkenly in front of everybody and tell them all to watch the pod. Guys, check out the pod. Um, but I. I talk shit about all of you. If there were several people in my grade, or even just one that told me they were contract killers, it's like I wouldn't believe anyone. Do you I think you could believe someone? Yeah. I guess so. I'm not mysterious enough to be a contract killer. Like, I don't think I went to high school with anyone mysterious enough to be a contract killer. Yeah. Ever. At all. I don't think I've ever met anyone that could be a contract killer. I think I generally try and stray away from those sorts of people. That's fair. <laughs> like on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Huh. I, yeah, I can't think of anyone that would be a contract killer. I know some some kids who would go to the military, but I don't know anyone who would become. Oh yeah, there were kids from my grade that went. Yeah, uh, that joined up. So to them. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. What does Uncle Sam say? I need you to have gay sex with yeah. other army. With men. Rosie the Riveter. Because <laughs> she has a dick. Yeah, <laughs> she's a strong lesbian. Oh man. Um, and and okay, what else? <laughs> He blows up the gas station. Oh, I like the scene. Um, it's sort of close to the end, but when, uh, what's his name? Dan Aykroyd, they go to have lunch together at and the they're diner. just like holding guns on they, each other they under have the paper table. bags and they're holding yeah. <laughs> guns at each other. And the tension keeps rising and rising and rising. And then yeah. the food gets there and Dan Aykroyd like pulls his bag over the table. Yeah. That's a great scene. Uh, yeah. And, um, and he gets out of the lunch by just like knocking over the food and then like walking behind the lady. And yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, I, I like all their scenes together because they're just like, they don't know if they're going to like kill each other. Mm -hmm. And so they're just like, you know, staying on each other. Yeah. And I like to like at the beginning, it's presented that they're like close and they know each other and like yeah. they're somewhat boys ish, you know. Yeah. But like then throughout boys. the movie, they start to slowly hate each other more and more because. Yeah. And the reasoning is because uh, John Cusack won't join his. Uh, assassins union union yeah 
Which um, is a crazy union once again. Yeah. And so he goes to prom with Minnie Driver, but he he meets her dad. Mm-hmm. Well, he, re, he he reconnects with her dad before. Yeah. Which, you know, there's a bit of like a weird thing going Tension. on when he meets his dad. And then obviously you find out later that his dad was the one who had the hit out on him. Yeah. Um, do you do you remember what the reason was? Was he was like doing something illegal, but I don't remember what it was. John Cusack said to him, "Like you must be doing some pretty unsavory stuff." Yeah, maybe that's like what that. it was. I, it's just kind of left at that. I think. Yeah. I don't think we ever actually get to know exactly what it is. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I love the scene where the dad is jogging up the street. And Dan Aykroyd's hanging out the side of the van with the sniper rifle. And then John Cusack peels up and does a fucking J turn and literally yanks the dad yeah. into the car. And he's like, they were about to shoot you. There's a hit out on your life. You're coming with me. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good scene. Yeah, that's a pretty sick scene. And then that obviously leads into the final shootout scene between yeah. Dan well, we, Aykroyd and Cusack. We got to talk the the reunion. He takes Minnie Driver and she she's like wearing a suit. I, yeah, she's wearing a pants. Yeah, suit. I thought she was gonna wear like a nice dress or something. She's wearing a pants suit. Yeah, she, she looks like Hillary suit. Clinton. Yeah, she does. And then um the assassin shows up with like a name tag. No, he gets a name tag yeah. from the lady at the front desk, and the lady at the front desk is like, Oh, you've changed a lot, and she like thinks she's he's hot. I thought it was like he grabs a girl's name and they they make like a trance joke. Oh, I thought it was he grabbed just a random dude's name. Maybe that's and what the it girl was. was like. Oh, you've changed a lot. And she thought he was hot. Maybe that's what it was. That's yeah. what I got from. Yeah, that. I don't remember. I watched it like a week ago. But yeah, so then him and him and Cute Sack get in a. They get into a yeah hustle, and he kills him with a pencil. He does. He stabs him in the neck with a pencil. And yeah. Mini driver walks in and. <gasps> well, no, Jeremy Piven walks in and he's like oh i'm you're my boy i'm gonna help you and so they wrap him up in flyers and paper and shit mini driver walks in first and screams oh yeah that's right she sees yeah. it. and then on her way down the staircase she sees jeremy piven yeah and jeremy piven's like oh my god what happened and then yeah. all she can say is martin or whatever Bull, yeah Bull, martin and he goes upstairs and sees him yeah yeah and jeremy piven was a fucking boy jeremy piven's a g he doesn't question anything he just yeah. goes so this guy was trying to kill you and martin's like yeah and jeremy piven's like oh okay then yeah that's totally reasonable you're you can stab him in the neck with a pencil and i will help you disintegrate his body yeah. in, in, in a furnace yeah um i think he's also like while they're at the reunion he's like i gotta go to my locker he he leaves his gun at the hotel but they're at the school and he's like i gotta go to my locker and he like hid a gun in his locker yeah i didn't like did he do that in high school and it's just been there this whole time i don't know like 10 years of kids have gone in that locker. And There's no just one been a found gun the there. gun. Yeah, that is. I've totally forgot about that detail. Yeah. It is super crazy that he put a gun in his locker when he was graduating high school. Yeah. Because there's no scene of him going back into the high school before the reunion. I don't know. The, the SD card in the middle camera is full. Oh, no. no. We just won't have a middle camera now. Oh, no. No wide shot. It's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Um, it's more intimate this way. It is. Yeah. But there's no scene of him going back into the school right. prior to the reunion in the movie, so it's implied then that he put the gun there. He just had a gun there for ago. 10 years <laughs> and no so one took it. Bat shit insane. Yeah. I guess at, at least at the high school I went to, no one really used their locker cuz you were just allowed to carry yeah, your backpack either. around all day. But in the 90s everybody everybody loved well that would have been the 80s. People loved their lockers in the 80s. 80s and early 90s, yeah. That was like locker, that was locker prime, bro. Locker talk. Kids were getting thrown in lockers. Yeah, that's People right. were putting pictures of their boo in their locker. Yeah. Yeah, you're we right. That was that. prime locker. That was locker era. Yeah. No one found the gun. That is, yeah, batshit insane. Yeah. Had a Especially gun in, in Gross locker. Point. That's so wild. For 10 years, it was sitting there and no yeah. one found it. Um, Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. So, yeah, he saves the dad and then Dan Aykroyd. They, like, break into the house and shoot everything. Like I said, no one in this movie has good aim. Yeah. Like, they're just destroying everything. Um, and, yeah, I, I love, like, the NSA agents. They're, like, following them around the whole movie. And then, finally, when he's, like, having the shootout with Dan Aykroyd, they bust in the door and then just get gunned down immediately. Because they get shot by Dan Aykroyd and John Cusack. Yeah. They both kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking idiots. <laughs> my favorite scene in that final shootout is when 
uh, they both run out of ammo. Yeah. Dan Aykroyd's like, oh, you out of ammo or whatever? And John Cusack's like, yeah. And Dan Aykroyd's like, what are you going to do? Throw a gun at me? And then they both turn the corner, and John Cusack has a giant where there's like bubble TVs, and yeah. he just smashes it onto his head, and that's how he kills him. Yeah. Well, no, Dan Aykroyd says to him, oh, like, I'll sell you a gun for $5,000. And oh, so he's yeah, like, yeah, deal. Yeah. So he tosses the gun over, and he thinks John Cusack's going to run and grab the gun. Yeah. So he's ready to shoot him. And John yeah. Cusack smashes he his head. He smashes his head TV. and just fucking kills him. Yeah. I think he, he does go over and shoot him afterwards. Really? I feel like I remember him shooting him. My thought process behind it is if you smash somebody's head with a TV like that and shatter the screen with their skull and then the TV you hit the back, the shards are going to go into the back of their neck. And yeah, I out. guess. Um, I don't that's remember. Just, that's, you know, I would shoot him. Practically. Yes, I would probably shoot him too. Yeah. It's like uh, in Zombieland, double tap. Yeah. You don't just do the TV. You mm-hmm. got to shoot him too. Yeah. Um, For sure. And then... Yeah, and then he goes to, like, Minnie Driver and her dad are hiding in the bathroom, and he, like, knocks on the door, and she's, like, pointing the gun at him, and he's just Isn't like, he, oh, yeah. He's shot, right? He got yeah, I think hit he somewhere? Gets, I think yeah, he hit. yeah, hit in the arm or something, yeah. But, um, yeah, and then he calls Alan Arkin, and he calls uh, Joan Rivers. What's her name? Joan, Joan Cusack. Cusack. his sister. Yeah, and it's just like, hey, I'm done with the assassin game. She yeah. just burns down She's the apartment. She's burning the entire apartment down. Yeah. yeah, that's a great scene. She plays a really good crazy woman. Yeah. Alan Arkin is like with a lady. and Who I like, think is presumed to be like his wife or girlfriend. Maybe, yeah. But he's like freaking out and he's packing. He's like losing his shit. Yeah. And I was like, I, I, didn't, I didn't get that I didn't apartment. understand it either, but... Oh, well. Yeah. And then, yeah, he asks Minnie Driver to marry him. Yep. And that is where our tale ends. That's And then they're driving away. She's blowing him to get mouth aids. Yep, she gets gay mouth aids. She gets gay mouth aids from blowing yep. John Cusack. Cusack. Uh-huh. What are your final thoughts, Joseph? Uh, my final thoughts are that this was a strong, strong uh, Michigan movie. John Cusack, John Balsack. <laughs> Joan mouth suck. Sure. Um, uh, mini mini drive or mini roadhead. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do, I was gonna I was gonna say drive head, but then I was like that's not a thing, and so I was like all right roadhead, but fake taxi driver instead of mini driver, fake yeah. taxi driver. Sure, taxi. You know what fake taxi is? I know like what fake taxi thing. is. Yeah. yeah, mini driver, fake taxi driver. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. It works. I thought you were doing like a Scorsese thing. Oh, well, it's it's Taxi Driver. Yeah. Starring Mini Driver. Right. But it's a fake taxi. It's a fake porno. taxi. Yeah. Boom. And yeah, and Squ- she is the driver. She's the taxi driver. Scorsese is in the back, and he's, he's- talking about. He's he's saying the N word and talking about how he likes to shoot women and, in their pussies. And he's jacking off while doing it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> that's fake taxi driver. Isn't that wild that that's I think we've talked about this on the <laughs> podcast before. Not me and you, but just like this has been brought up in a previous previous episode that Scorsese cast himself in his movie just so he could like say the N word and talk about shooting girls in the pussy. Oh yeah. Yeah. That is insane wild scene but hey you know it's, when you're doing as much coke as scorsese was in the 80s you can do whatever you want that's true you can kind of do whatever the hell you want yeah what are your final thoughts on the movie i liked it a lot it yeah. rocked it was very fun to watch it was easy to watch it was short like it didn't like feel short yeah but it was short it was pretty short um, like an hour 45 yeah the soundtrack fucking rocked yeah i loved the soundtrack mini driver's really hot sure um john's Sack. John Sack is really cute. Sure. And uh no, looks good in this movie. Bunch, loft balloons. Um I think a message to you, Rudy, is in this movie too. I like that song. Yeah. Uh Blister in the Sun. Yeah. That's in this movie. That's in a lot of movies though. The, yeah, there's more. Songs. I couldn't find I the soundtrack on like Apple Music. I'm sure I could really google it and find yeah, it probably, somewhere but on google but yeah it's a waste of time that is a waste of my time yeah. i've recognized like 10 out of the 13 songs anyway, yeah so jeremy uh 
I guess penis. I don't know. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, big, big. No. Jeremy, Jeremy big. Jeremy, pen? Jeremy given this. Jeremy, Jeremy given head. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy given, given head. head. <laughs> That's pretty good. And he, when he's driving John Cusack around, he's sucking his dick, but he's yeah. still driving. He's driving. He's yeah. And John Cusack is like, "Yo, dude, watch the road." Yeah. He he's quick in this movie. Um, Jeremy Piven or John Cusack? No, John Cusack. Like his busts and like his one, you know, he'll do like little Tony Stark like comments. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, whatever. He He's very Tony Stark in this movie. Yeah. He loves one liners. Yeah. Yeah. You can watch this movie if you like. Um, I think you should just watch this movie if you're from Michigan or even yeah. not. It's a good, fun, easy watch and many drivers hot. Yeah. You know? What do you rank this in all the Michigan movies? What are the movies we watched? We I didn't like, watch RoboCop. Well, we kind of did, but we yeah. didn't. Um, what else did we do? We watched a Dr. Death movie. Oh, yeah, Kevorkian. That was a good movie. Yeah. So the bottom of the list is for love of the game. Yep. Because, A, it was they were just on the Tigers. It wasn't even yeah. based in Detroit. It's true. They were just on the Tigers. Yeah. That's, and it was shit. Uh -huh. So it's the bottom Boring. of the list. Yeah. Second to last, I would say... Robocop, but that's only because I didn't watch it. Yeah. None of us did. I did that too. Yeah, sure. And then second, probably Gross Point Blank, and then Dr. Death first. Okay. But if I watched Robocop, Robocop would probably be ahead of Gross Point Blank. Yeah. I would say I would swap um, Al Pacino and Gross Point Blank because I, I don't know. I like that movie a lot. I could see myself rewatching it. Gross Point Blank? Gross Point Blank. Yeah, yeah. it was a really fun I like movie. the, yeah, jo Don't Know Jack movie too. I but. think I could rewatch Gross Point Blank. I don't think I could rewatch You Don't Know Jack, but that doesn't make You know, Don't Know Jack a worse movie. It just It's more tedious to watch. Yeah. It's longer. It it's very heavy. Yeah. It's emotional. Yeah. Gross Point Blank's like a comedy, you know? Yeah. Those are always easier to rewatch. Which I will say, at every one of Paulie's mics that I've gone to since we did that movie, he's brought up Jack. <laughs> Polly loves Jack Kevorkian, yeah, we, apparently. We we did something to Polly. We're like now we planted a seed. Every set he does. Does has he to have a Jack good Kevorkian joke? I don't really remember. Okay. I don't really pay attention to other people's jokes. Um You're too busy firing yourself up. Yeah. I'm getting heated, doing coke in the bathroom. Well, if you want to hear me and Joe write jokes and write uh, other things. Such as shorts, sure, shows, yep. scripts, yeah, anything to be written, yeah, gay pornos. You can find that on the page. Check out the page, folks. For as little as a dollar a month. Yeah. Which we still haven't decided what you're gonna get for each price point. No. But the um, we'll we'll figure that out. Well, like, we have business meetings. Yeah, we have meetings. We're These at a table. Like, we have like Donald Trump and Mark Cuban coming over. So right, they're gonna tell us what we should gonna, do with the yeah, page. Help us out with yeah. our Patreon. Yeah. Um, and yeah, check out the page. Follow us on our socials. Sub to this channel if you're in the Metro Detroit area. April 25th, we are hosting a our first stand-up comedy show in live this building in this very room. Um, if if you want to kill us, don't come here to do that come here to watch us do stand-up um it's gonna be a good time we got so many great comics who will potentially be on this mic um we will have more info on the lineup yeah we on. we have a lineup but it's like more than a month away so it's a, a lot of tentative people yes and i've gotten a lot of people who are who have told me they're gonna come but have flaked on me in the past um, but for now, at least, you know, you can come watch Joseph host. For now, you can watch me, the host if with the most if. And you can watch me. You can watch Riley. The comedian with the s small penisian. Small penian. <laughs> um, you can watch, uh, who else will be there? Friend of the show, Eamon Daher, might be there. Very funny man. Uh, uh, friend of the show and former co-host, Brad Leonard, might be there. Um Friend of the show, Nicholas Ford, said he will be there, but famously doesn't show up for things. So he <laughs> probably won't be there. <laughs> um, and it's going to be a great time. So we'll see you there. And we'll see you in the next app of whatever we're making next. Big peace. <laughs>